Oh my God, what a day of football. What a year of football it's been. What a season of football it's been. The Premier League this season has been absolutely mental and I've been waiting for it to end so I can talk to you about my thoughts. Today was insane. It's one of those days where I sit there watching the football and think, this is why I love football. Now, I know a lot of you will be watching this knowing why I look so happy right now. We'll talk about that later, but for now, I wanted to talk to you just about the Premier League in general this year. I'm going to talk about every single team and, of course, I'm going to talk about today's results and what it means for, for the final table. So if you're watching this video and you don't want to know the results or if you're waiting for match of the day, all of that stuff, then don't watch this video yet. Come back later. So uh, let's go into the table first. Let's take a look at how it looks after 38 games. Now, although today didn't mean too much for top and bottom, we already had three clubs relegated. Leicester already won the league a few weeks ago. It still meant quite a lot for, uh, I would say, the top eight, maybe top seven. Um, and especially it meant a lot for Champions League football, especially with Man City and Manchester United battling it out for fourth. Although at Man United today, the game was abandoned. Absolutely crazy. There I was. I put on Sky Sports, ready to watch the game. I thought, come on, Bournemouth, you know, you could do something special today. Beat them at Old Trafford. And then they started evacuating the stadium. There was a suspect package. Apparently, it was a mobile phone strapped to a pipe or something in one of the toilets. Um, as far as I can tell, as I'm recording this, it was um, a hoax. It was, it was fake. But... Thank God for that. Can you imagine if it was a real explosive? That would have been absolutely terrifying. So really pleased that's not the case and it was just a hoax. But of course, that means in the table, you can see there, Man United have played 37 games and so have Bournemouth. So they're going to reschedule that game for after the FA Cup, apparently. But it doesn't mean anything because Man United cannot make it into the top four now because Man City have such a big advantage over them on goal difference. However, they can obviously still make it into fifth, I believe. Yes, they can. So I've got the table in front of me. We're going to go through each team, but we're going to do it in alphabetical order because I'm actually going to use FIFA to do this and look at some of the, the players in the teams and how they performed. And uh, yeah, that is the league table right now. First of all, of course, Aston Villa, Norwich and Newcastle have gone down, but massive shout out to Newcastle. Thank you so much for today. We'll be talking about that result a little bit later. And of course, Leicester City won the Premier League. We'll be talking about that as well. Now, first of all, of course, it is Arsenal. Not because I'm an Arsenal fan, but because they are first in alphabetical order. Um, now, I want to keep it kind of short because obviously there's 20 teams to go through. So sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy me rambling on about football. So with Arsenal this season, I felt it was our chance. You know, it was our chance to finally win the league. Um, in the end, we've come second, which sounds great. But actually, when you look into the stats, look at the results... It has been a very, very poor season for us, but it ended on a massive high because we pipped Tottenham to second place. I, I don't know how. How we are in second place, I don't know. Clearly, this season has been awful for the big clubs, especially because Leicester have won it. That, I mean, it's just horrendous, really, if you think about it. Um, we have one of our worst seasons in a long time and we finished second. Okay. Um, but my general thoughts, because I've already talked about Arsenal quite a lot, um, I am still probably... I'm, I, well, I'm not probably... I am still Wenger out. I, I want something new at the club, but he is going to be here next season, and I've accepted that since I last made my videos. Um, so even though I do want something new, something fresh at the club, and I know a lot of people agree with me, I'm okay with Wenger doing one more season if that's going to be it, and then that will be the end of his contract. But there are rumours that he's going to be offered a new one until 2019, and if that's the case, I'm not happy with that. But I'm not going to talk anymore about Arsenal because, yeah, I've covered that subject many, many times over the last few weeks. We're going to move on to Aston Villa, who finished bottom of the league, and deservedly so. Absolutely horrendous season from Aston Villa, and I, in my opinion, don't have any hope of coming straight back up next season because I can name 10 teams in the championship better than Aston Villa, maybe even 15. <laughs> it was just such a bad season from Aston Villa. But when you look at that, that side, I mean, you've got to wonder what the hell happened, man. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it, but they just have not performed well this season at all, conceding so many goals and so many bad goals as well. And um, yeah, best of luck to them in the championship, but I don't think we're going to see them in the Premier League again anytime soon. And now Bournemouth, their first season in the Premier League. I've been following them all season long. A lot of people think I just like them because I did a series on them. 
It's not true. Actually, well, that's part of the reason, but actually I used to go to Bournemouth every single year when I was a kid, um, up until about 15, 16 years old. I've been to Bournemouth many, many times and I really like the place. And when they got into the Premier League, I said to myself, I'm really going to you know, watch them. I'm going to follow them throughout the year and uh, almost support them as a second team. And it's been a relatively good season, a little bit inconsistent, but the main thing is they survived. They've brought in some great players, although they got very, very unlucky with injuries. I think next season, if they can bring in some new players this summer to strengthen the squad further, I think they could easily beat their current position in the league. I'm hoping maybe next year they could get 14th, that kind of, uh, that kind of position. But um, I, I really like Bournemouth. I think they play brilliant football and I'm just so glad they survived. Now, Chelsea. <laughs> Where do we start with Chelsea? Well, first of all, 10th. How? 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 Chelsea won the Premier League 12 months ago and they're 10th. Look at that team. Look at that team. That's not even their strongest team, but holy, well, it pretty much is, but holy shit. How is a team that good finish 10th? I think at least half people, half of the population would have said that Chelsea would go on and win the league again this year, or maybe Man City, but no one in their right mind would have predicted that not only would Leicester win it, but Chelsea wouldn't even finish in the top four, not even the top eight. They finished 10th. And I think they're very, very lucky that the story of the season is Leicester because let's say Man City won the league or Arsenal won the league. Everyone would be talking about Chelsea finishing 10th because Man City winning the league isn't a massive story. It's almost something that you'd expect. But because Leicester, a team that finished 14th last year, they almost went down, then went on to win the league... No one's talking about Chelsea, and I think that they're very, very lucky. Absolutely horrendous season. I think probably one of the worst seasons we've seen from a big club in England for a long, long time. And I don't think it'll be beaten. Can you imagine finishing first, winning the Premier League, and then finishing 10th? I don't think that'll happen again. Absolutely terrible season from Chelsea, but again, very, very lucky that Leicester took all the headlines. But in terms of next season, I think Chelsea will come back nice and strong. I think Conte will turn the club around and do well. I think they will be fighting for that top four again next season. That's the way it should be anyway. Up next, we've got Crystal Palace. I don't want to talk too much about Crystal Palace other than they started brilliantly. And then about Christmas, New Year time, they've been probably one of the worst teams in the Premier League. I'm not sure what's gone wrong. I do actually think Pardew's a very good manager but something, something went wrong over Christmas. Maybe at the Christmas party, they all had a massive meltdown and argued with each other. And um, I, I really don't know. I, again, can't put my finger on what's gone wrong with Crystal Palace. But you look at the team. If they, if they bring in some more players this summer, I'm sure they'll be strong again next year. Really disappointed with Crystal Palace. I thought they would have done a lot better. Now, moving on to another club that has been awful recently. Everton. They may have won today, but recent performances got their manager sacked. I think it was going to happen anyway, to be honest. They haven't looked very good for quite a while now, I would say. Martinez, nice guy, but clearly tactics weren't quite right at the moment and the team was massively underperforming. But again, you look at the team, if they can hold on to their big stars, Lukaku, for example, Barkley, Barkley will be snapped up. If someone can get Barkley, they will. Young Englishman, um, and he is obviously very good. And Lukaku deserves to be in the Champions League as well. I don't see how they're going to keep them. But if they do, I'm sure Everton will bounce back. They'll get themselves a new manager. I think De Boer from Ajax will be there next season, maybe. And uh, again, they'll be fighting for that kind of top eight, top six, maybe. Um, but this season is definitely one to forget for them. Now, Leicester City won the Premier League. I don't need to talk about it. Absolutely amazing. The best team this year by far. They deserve to win the Premier League. And I'm so pleased they did in the end. Obviously, I would have loved Arsenal to do it. But as soon as it was pretty much over for Arsenal, I was all the way behind Leicester. I couldn't imagine Spurs finishing top. That would have been absolutely awful. But shout out to Mares, Vardy, Kante, Morgan, everyone. Schmeichel in goal has been incredible. They are just an absolutely amazing team and they give hope to every football team in England. Not necessarily professionally, but I mean, if you're struggling on Sunday league, you can do a Leicester and win the league next season, yeah? Um, we'll move on from Leicester. I've talked about them enough already. Liverpool. Ah, now this is a tough subject because... When Klopp joined, I thought, oh shit, they're going to be very, very good. But actually, again, I've, I've used this term already in this video, but very inconsistent. Liverpool one week can be absolutely incredible. I remember them when Klopp first joined beating uh, Chelsea. Now, obviously, beating Chelsea isn't worthy of a trophy this year. They've been awful. But it was such a convincing display. Beating Dortmund in Europe 
And there's obviously months in between where they would lose games, draw games, make huge mistakes. And you know what? I really, really hope they win the Europa League final. And that's coming from an Arsenal fan. I think Liverpool need it. I really do. I want them back to being a top four club. I miss that rivalry with Liverpool. It doesn't seem to be there like, like that anymore. I think next season Liverpool should be a lot better because Klopp is actually going to make signings he wants. He's going to make it his team. It's not Brendan's team anymore. And um, I'm sure they will be fighting for that top six next year. Um, but not such a great season for Liverpool. Now, Man City, they did manage to get Champions League football for Pep Guardiola, who's coming in in the summer. I think getting top four was absolutely vital. Can you imagine Pep Guardiola joining and they're in the Europa League? I think there would have been some sort of clause in that contract. There is no way Pep would have joined if they finished in fifth or sixth. It just, for me, he would have at, like terminated that contract as soon as he could. But they've made it into the top four. Pellegrini did an amazing job at City. I really like the guy, very classy. But what I do want to say is the City fans were not classy on their final home game day. I thought Pellegrini deserved a much better send-off than that. Pretty much everyone left the ground. What the fuck was that, man? Pellegrini, I know it's only been three years or whatever, but he just got you to the semi-finals of the Champions League. That's pretty impressive. He won you the league. He won you the Capital One Cup. I mean, he deserved a better send-off. There's no doubt in my mind that next year City will be fighting for the uh, Premier League trophy with a team like they've got, with Pep Guardiola coming in. I'm freaking scared, man. I'm shitting myself. They are going to be a force next season, especially with new signings, with all the money they've got. Nothing else I need to say. Manchester United, the other side of Manchester, they are not going to be making it into the Champions League again. Not good enough at all. With a team like that, they've got to be doing better. But Yes, they have struggled with injuries. Yes, they've got an idiot as a manager. Um, I'm kidding. I actually quite like Louis van Gaal. He might, you might not agree with everything he does, but clever guy. And I like the way he handles himself. He's a, he's a professional, you know. But that's just my opinion. I, maybe I like him because Man United aren't doing well with him. I think if he stays on, though, next year will be a better year, especially without Champions League football, although Europa League isn't exactly easy. But either way, again, they need to invest this summer. They need to bring in some big players, big names, and uh, go for it next season. But just a quick word on today again, that the match was abandoned. I'm really, really glad that nothing bad happened. That could have been absolutely awful. Imagine if an explosion went off. Imagine if hundreds of people got killed. It would have been a disastrous, well, it still is a disastrous day for football. The fact that something like this has happened and um, yeah, hopefully it's not gonna affect football too much in the next few weeks with you know clubs being on high alert, especially with the FA Cup final. But it seems maybe some stupid idiot decided to play a prank on a mate. I don't know. Either way, today was horrible for Man United. Two weeks in a row now where they've turned up late or had a delay or an abandoned game. Um, some bad luck there. But next season, I'm hoping Man United can put up a bit more of a challenge. Because, again, it's kind of boring without Liverpool and United. Newcastle! I think I support them tonight, guys. Oh, my God. Thank you so much, Newcastle. Thank you for beating Tottenham. And not just beating them humiliating them down to 10 men and then scoring three more goals oh man I thought they were going to collapse they were 2-0 up down to 10 men and Tottenham get a goal and I just think yeah that's it they're going to finish second now aren't they but no Newcastle after being relegated last week put up a fight what why why not put up that fight against Villa when you drew 0-0 if you win that game everything's different I don't know, but that team right now I'm in love with. Thank you so much for beating Tottenham today. And once again, because of the result, Arsenal finish above Spurs for the 21st year in a row. Oh, what a shame. Oh, that is just, it was a sweet, sweet moment. After a really, you know, disappointing four or five months as an Arsenal fan, today almost, almost made up for it just because of beating Tottenham to second place. And I know it's kind of sad, you know, like I'm, I'm 23 years old and I'm actually cheering because we've beaten, we've beaten Tottenham to second place. It is quite sad, but in football, you've got to enjoy these moments and it happened again. It's happened again. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. Newcastle next season in the championship. Will they do okay? Yes, I think they will be fine. They're going to pump some money into the club, no doubt. If they hold on to Rafa, they will be back into the Premier League after next season they will bounce straight back if they hold on to their player well some of the players some of the players need to go but some of their key players need to stay and Rafa most of all they need to do everything they can to keep him at the club 
Now Norwich, again, I don't want to talk about Norwich too much. I really like Norwich. I like them as a club, but for me, every time I watch them, they just weren't quite at it. I don't think they are quite good enough for the Premier League right now. Um, so investing in that squad is an absolute must. Southampton, a record-breaking season for them. Again, goes a bit unnoticed because of the whole Leicester winning, Chelsea finishing 10th, Arsenal beating Tottenham to second and all of that stuff. The match being abandoned today. But really, you've got to look at it. Southampton have had an incredible final few weeks, final few months of the season, and uh, they're in fifth. I mean, that that is absolutely amazing. And Ronald Koeman, they've got to keep him. What a manager he is. I would be happy with him at Arsenal. That's how good he is, in my opinion. I really like him. They play great football. They've lost so many players over the years, yet they're still really competitive. And I love Southampton for that. Fantastic club, fantastic classy fans, classy players, and I hope they do well in the Europa League next year. <laughs> and then Stoke City. What can you say about Stoke City? Very difficult to play against. They're always strong at home, although they lost recently like 4 0 three games in a row or something like that. Up next, we've got Sunderland, the great escapees. How have they done it again? I'll tell you why. Up top, Defoe. That is it. And Kazri on the left has been fantastic. Kone at the back. Really, really good signings from Sam Allardyce. Uh, Swansea, I thought they were really good against City today. Montera on the left was tearing Sanya a new butthole. Um, now, with Swansea, it's such, a, it's such a difficult one to talk about because they can be amazing on their day. They beat Arsenal. They beat Arsenal very convincingly, at the, actually, in the end. We didn't play well at all that day. And then they can be awful the next week. I felt sorry for Gary Monk. Really like him. But the new manager seems to be doing really well. And I'm sure Swansea will stay kind of mid-table for as long as they can maintain that type of squad. Uh, Watford, Dini and Igalo up front, they were fantastic this year. Decent season, they've stayed up, that's the main thing, and we'll see how they get on next season. West Brom, not a team that I care too much about, sorry if you're a West Brom fan, but I mean, they've got a good squad. Rondon up front, you guys know I love Rondon from my Rage to Glory series, which is returning, by the way, it's coming back soon. Um, I think it's a bit of a difficult one to talk about West Brom as well, especially because I don't follow them too much. But every time I watch them, they're just a solid team. They grind out results and they will be mid-table as well, like Swansea, West Ham. What a season for them. But then towards the end, it just seemed to just, just no, just seemed to disappear. They've got a new, new stadium next season. If they can keep Payet and keep their team playing the way they have been, they will be a successful club there. There's no doubt in my mind they can be a solid top six team, a consistent top six team, providing they keep the manager as well. Bilic is absolutely amazing. Really good season for West Ham. It's been an incredible season. It really has. Leicester have won the league and it's never going to happen again. And I'm quite sad about that. We're never going to have another Leicester. There's no doubt in my mind that next year they'll be good, but they will not win the league again. I don't think it's going to happen but what a season it's been, and I'm glad it happened. It's something that I will talk about for the rest of my life. My grandchildren, I'll say, I was alive when Leicester won the league, when they survived relegation the year before. It will never happen again. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.